Hello from the Department of Aeronautics at Imperial College London. I, Ajit Panesar, your admissions teacher, along with Talasi and Ayalas, would like to warmly welcome you. We are really excited to tell you more about our program and what reading aeronautics at Imperial mean for you. In this talk, you'll get the chance to hear from the entire team and we even have student perspective woven into it. So we hope you find this informative and interesting. Let's start with our admissions process, which is nicely captured by the illustration on the right. Upon evaluating your UCAS application, you receive an invite to sit our Aeronautics Mathematics Aptitude Test, or the AMAT. Success in this secures you an interview spot. If all goes well, you should expect an offer from us. At each stage, decisions are made on cumulative performance so far. Some stats for you. We have a 9 to 1 ratio of applications to admissions and a typical class size of 135, which is generally very multicultural and encompasses a wide ranging academic backgrounds. Let me give you a taste of the early days. This is Imperial College in 1957. On the right is an aerial footage of the college and on the left is the Roderick Hill building, which hosted Aero for several decades. What I love about these images is the marriage between preservation and transformation. Here you can see the timeline of our department, marking its 100 years in 2019. 1925 saw the first wind tunnel facility 1957 marked the move to the Roderick Hill building, the one you saw in the previous slide. And in 1983, we established the UK's first Centre for Composite Materials. A couple of years later, we opened the largest university wind tunnel facility. The last decade has been a period of significant growth for us. This is evidenced by our state-of-the-art facilities used for both teaching and research, giving you an unmatched learning experience, ranging from wind tunnels, flight test arenas, flight simulators, 3D printers, and computing facilities. Most of our facilities, as well as the department itself, is based in the City and Guilds building, which is right by the main entrance to the college. Our degree is first and foremost an engineering degree with significant breadth, blurring the lines between an aerospace and aeronautics program, as we cover aspects of, for example, spacecraft engineering. Some of the core topics covered in the course are listed here. You'll need to know aerodynamics to understand how the flow of air over the wings and fuselage impart forces upon them. You need structural dynamics to understand how the aircraft responds to these forces. Control engineering lets us describe how any movable control surfaces can be used to maneuver the aircraft. Material science helps us create lightweight parts and knowledge of propulsion enables in the design of efficient engines for the perfect takeoff. We are proud to be positioned second in the UK for aeronautics program. Accredited by Royal Aeronautical Society and Institution of Mechanical Engineering. You'll be interacting with world leading researchers and have an excellent support network within the college. On the right, you will find the variation to our core and the most common four-year MEng in Aeronautical Engineering degree program. You all start your journey with the core H401 program and everyone gets the same first couple of years experience. One can specialize in Aeronautical Engineering with Spacecraft Engineering H415 by taking specially tailored space-themed modules. Two other exciting options are to spend either a year abroad or a year in industry. 
for the year abroad, you spend a year studying at one of our partner institutions in France, Germany, Singapore, or the US. Alternatively, students who want to gain practical work experience during their degree can organize to spend a year at an aerospace related company. In all cases, the decision of transferring is taken during the degree and is dependent upon how well you have performed in your studies to date. To reiterate, due to the excellent offering of our modules, most of our students graduate under the Core Edge 401 program. Hi, I'm Manita and I'm a PhD student at the Department of Aeronautics at Imperial. But before that, I did my undergrad at Mench here as well. Ever since I was really little, I've been super interested and fascinated by everything that can fly, including birds, aircraft, spacecraft, and I wanted to know all about them and how and why they can fly. So when I was a teenager, I decided I wanted to learn how to fly myself, so I joined our local gliding club and started to train towards obtaining my gliding license. This also included learning a lot of theory, including flight mechanics and flight control. And I realized that that's something I'm super interested in. So aeronautics seemed like the most natural choice of a course to study at university for me. I decided to study at Imperial because for once I really liked the idea of living in London. But more importantly, why Imperial really stuck out is because it has a dedicated aeronautics course at undergrad level and a dedicated aeronautics department. Whereas at many other universities I was considering, aeronautics is offered as a specialization within mechanical engineering. Regardless of the program that you choose, which can be year abroad or year in industry, the structure of the first two years is the same for all our students and is designed to build a strong foundation in engineering subjects. Later on, in third and fourth years, you can choose among a range of specialist modules that we offer and you can complete group projects which allow you to take a design idea through several stages of development. You see the structure of our MNG program in a glance here. As you can see, we have a variety of modules which come in different colors and each color corresponds to a specific year of study. In addition to that, modules come in different categories. For example, fundamentals like mathematics and mechanics, aerodynamics and propulsion, materials and structures, control and design, and finally, management and humanities. In addition to these taught modules, we have group design project in the third year and individual project in the fourth year, which are research projects done by our students and supervised by our, uh, by our academics. The theoretical base for our whole program is built in the first year. In this year, you will see some familiar topics like mathematics or mechanics, which are similar to maths and physics you've seen before. And you will also see some new subjects like uh, aerodynamics, the structures, material science, thermodynamics and introduction to aerospace. In addition to these, we teach our students computer programming, which is increasingly important, no matter you choose a career in industry or in academia and research. You may have previous experience in programming or you may not. In either case, we train you to become an excellent programmer by the end of our degree. In addition to these theoretical modules, we also have engineering practice in the first year, which is a practical module and gives you the opportunity to have hands-on engineering and design experience. In the second year, the structure of uh, our syllabus is very similar to the first year. The majority of our modules are continuation of first year modules, but of course in a higher level. And you will see some new topics as well, like mechatronics, propulsion and turbo machinery, flight dynamics, and control. Both in the first year and second year, the assessment is uh, skewed towards examination. You will have 75% uh, examination and 25% uh, 
coursework. And coursework can come in different types, for example, a lab report or a programming project. My name is Philip, and I'm a third year aeronautical engineering student. Imperial has a rich diversity of over 340 student societies and sports teams. Whether you love mountain climbing, investing in stocks, or playing in an orchestra, there's something here for everyone. It's an amazing opportunity to explore your interests, make some friends, and have fun. Aero students are extra lucky as you guys have the opportunity to join Imperial College London Rocketry. We design, build, test, and launch our very own rockets. We have three main aims to provide you guys with extra engineering experience, build on concepts learned in class, and prepare you for a career, potential career in the aerospace sector. As part of ICLR, um, ICLR is the perfect reminder that every single day, what I do is actually rocket science. Being part of the team means I have the opportunity to work on incredible projects like building an actual rocket engine. Using the equations in class, we can size the engine, predict its thrust, and design the flight trajectory. And thanks to the department, we can even build these rocket engines ourselves, like here, and test them firing rocket engines that we as students developed ourselves. Working as part of ICLR is incredibly satisfying because I can look back over the past years and see how far I've grown as an engineer and how my skills have increased and my confidence has grown. I feel truly encouraged to envision more challenging projects in the future and do amazing engineering work as part of an amazing team. I really hope you'll join us and do exciting engineering every day. My name is Nemeka. I just finished my second year as an undergrad in the Department of Aeronautics. I joined the 10x5 Wind Tunnel team as part of the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Scheme. So today I set up the uh, motion sensor system. Uh, it's basically a set of eight cameras that work in the infrared spectrum. This motion tracking system is set up to track the motions of an athlete, in this particular case as a cyclist. And then anything that either emits IR or reflects the light, or, or then the camera themselves will pick it up, and then that's what we see these, as these white dots. We put markers on the body, spherical reflective markers, which reflect the LED light, and the camera picks them up and tracks the, the reflections. With this project, we're hoping to better understand the transmission risk of SARS-like particles and other aerosols that travel uh, in your breath. So being involved in a project like this is very rewarding. Um, I get to develop my aptitude for research and my ability to research. And this is cutting edge research, very exciting and very topical as well, given the nature of the world. Three, two, one, off. So in my free time, I'm part of the ICLR, which is Imperial College London Rocketry Society. So we've had several successful launches and tests, and we look forward to completing more tests and participating in more competitions, both nationally and internationally. Personally, I think it's amazing that Opportunities like this are available to undergraduates um, and we have access to some of the world's best technology, world's best equipment, working with the world's best in these fields. In the third year, there are some core modules which cover advanced topics building on the content that you would have seen in the first two years. It's also the point at which you first get to specialize your degree by picking optional modules related to what you enjoy the most and what you find the most interesting and exciting. So for instance, you may be interested in topics such as computational fluid dynamics, fluid structure interactions, high performance computing, material science, or topics that are specifically important for spacecraft engineering. There are even some interdepartmental exchange modules that you may be interested in. So the first two terms of your third year will consist of a combination of lectures and advanced laboratory exercises. A big part of the third year is, however, the group design project or GDP. This is a group project where a team of typically around 25 students are set the challenge by academics in the department. This challenge will involve topics that the students are previously unfamiliar with 
but based on the analytical skills that students have learned over the past three years, they come up with a well thought out, thorough, interesting solution to this design challenge. It's a very exciting part of the third year, which many of our students enjoy a lot. In the fourth year, our students get an opportunity to further specialize and delve deeper into topics that they find interesting. This could, for instance, be in areas such as fluid mechanics, structural engineering or spacecraft engineering. A significant part of the fourth year is the final year project or FYP. This is a longer individual research project that each student works on throughout the fourth year. So each of us academics proposes a range of research problems related to our current research. And these are at the level at which our fourth year students can really get to grips with the material and even contribute to cutting edge research. The topics of these projects are extremely diverse and cover all areas of aeronautics as well as other areas within science and engineering in general. For instance, past projects have been on turbulence, composite materials, control of spacecraft systems, control of robotic systems, even control of biological systems. Chances are, whatever you are interested in, there is a project for you. There is also the option to do a FYP in collaboration with industries or external research establishments. Some students even propose their own research topics. The FYP is an opportunity for students to really engage and get involved with the cutting edge research that is being performed within the department. And it's actually quite impressive that after just four years, our students can really contribute to world re leading research. Some of our top FYPs have even contributed to publications in top international journals and conferences. Hi everyone, my name is Tejosfo or Tex, and I was responsible for the structural design as well as the computer-aided design for the group design project in our third year. So GDP for me was personally one of my favorites because this is where it really started coming together. In our first and second year, we learned a lot about theories and concepts, but I wasn't always sure how to apply them. But in GDP, we tried taking these and translating them to a more practical purpose. We were encouraged to take risks. We were encouraged to try out something completely different and um, as a result, we tried out things that worked, we tried out things that didn't work, and as a result, we came up with something completely new. So as part of our structural design, we also use things like topology optimization, as well as generative design, to come up with a new workflow for, for a new airframe. So our entire project revolved around coming up with a new vehicle design that would capture falling spacecraft rockets from the sky. So it was a lot of fun, very practical, and um, I hope you have as much as fun as we did. Our undergraduate students get a glimpse of the research that goes on within the department throughout their degree. There are several occasions at which students can directly engage with the research as well, for instance via undergraduate research opportunities and final year projects. So it's worth telling you a little bit about the work that we do at this stage. What you will find is that our research actually spans several themes, such as fluid mechanics, control and robotics, aerospace materials and structures, and computational methods and mathematical modeling. One of the very exciting things about the research in our department is that all of these themes are highly interrelated, in part because of the very multidisciplinary nature of aeronautics itself. In terms of fluid mechanics, the research within the department is extremely diverse. We work on both experimental and theoretical problems. One of the many strengths of the department is in fact its excellent wind tunnel facilities. This includes, for instance, a very slow, low speed wind tunnel with large test sections, ideal, for instance, for wind turbine related work. At the other end of the spectrum, we also have a hypersonic, supersonic wind tunnel capable of generating really fast flows. We work on important problems such as trying to understand turbulence mechanisms, trying to see how we can best control flows, for instance to make our future aircraft as efficient as possible. And we work on very different problems as well, for instance involving cardiovascular systems or respiratory systems. In terms of control and robotics, our research is once again very varied and diverse. We work on the development of the next generation of robotic systems, for instance, aerial robots or multi-terrain robots, which could be used for infrastructure maintenance or environmental monitoring. 
We work on applied control problems, such as control of these robotic systems that we develop or control of flexible air vehicles or multi-agent systems. And we also work on fundamental control problems, such as flow control, optimal control and data-driven control. These fundamental control problems are of course important to robotic systems, but they are also applicable to a wide variety of problems that arise in engineering as a whole. Hi, my name is Tom, I'm a final year student here in the Department of Aeronautics at Imperial College. For my final year project, I'm optimising multi-element supersonic airfoils. These were really popular back in the 30s, and with the resurgence in supersonic aircraft interest from the likes of Boom and other startups, there's been real interest in this research field. So I started off with a 2D shock expansion solver, which is using skills that developed in the course in second and third year. When that couldn't resolve all the physics, we decided to move to full uh, computational fluid dynamic simulations through the use of open foam, which is a free open source software. So we took 35 different biplane configurations, iterated them through 12 different Mach number instances, and came up with a very large data set. We then able to fit curves to this and predict the performance of the airfoil in various different scenarios. Validating the sim is also an important step, and it's great to see your own results align with literature. Overall, it was a great project and exceptionally extensive work, which has led me to pursue further study after Imperial. For my final year project, I've been working on developing data-driven turbulence models. This was in collaboration between Imperial College London and Rolls-Royce, so my project had a direct industrial application. In my project, I've been starting by running a simulation on a CFD software and using this specific test case then on doing analysis, which involved machine learning. First, I've been doing some clustering to identify specific regions of the flow, which could then be used by the neural network to train the model. And then this model could then be applied on a new uh, Hydra solver, the CFD solver, in order to find a quicker and more accurate than current industrial applications um, solvers offer. I think this project was not only interesting because I applied a lot of knowledge I learned in the first three years of Imperial, but also because I've been able to develop new skills, especially Python and the package of TensorFlow. And I think this is great because not only you use the knowledge you develop, but also you, you learn and experience something new. And this is very unique to Imperial. Research into aerospace materials and structures considers the study of lightweight materials like composites. We undertake research into how they fracture and break, and how to monitor and predict whether this has happened. One key difficulty in making aircrafts out of composites is that if they are subject to an impact, for example, someone dropping a hammer on a wing, the damage is beneath the surface and may not be obvious to the eye. For this reason, Academics in the department are developing remote sensing techniques known as structural health monitoring. There is also an increasing effort within the department for the use of micro air vehicles and novel manufacturing such as additive manufacturing to realize next generation designs. Finally, a lot of us work on computational methods for both the simulation and analysis of fluids and structural systems. For this reason, our research looks to push the boundaries of what is possible computationally. And we even have high performance computing facilities at Imperial to help with this direction of research. You may be wondering what a typical student in our department looks like. Bottom line, one need not be passionate about aeroplanes and rockets. A lot of our students are, but what should be clear is that our subject impacts upon recyclable materials, biological fluid flows, and impact analysis. We want students who are academically excellent at maths and physics, who have the potential to excel in one of these areas and it may only be over the course of the degree that you find an area that fascinates you the most. However, the breadth of our degree gives you the chance to find your true area of expertise. We are proud to have served the needs of aero enthusiasts and curious minds alike for over a century now, and we hope to continue doing so for centuries to come. On top of offering one of the best educational experiences, the City of London 
adds a colorful cultural dimension to our students' lives. From great museums, beautiful parks, lovely places to visit, to trying new adventures. Our courses being professionally accredited highlight the fact that our degree is general enough to open doors for you in engineering related careers. What our degree is giving you is a great breadth of experience which can be applied to a wide range of disciplines such as Formula One, Wind Energy, Software Engineering and even in Banking and Consultancy. Before starting my undergrad, I did a year in industry placement and I really enjoyed this work experience. So at the start of the degree, I just wanted to get my MEng out of the way and go on to work in industry. However, while I was studying, I started to really enjoy the like fast paced and challenging nature of the university environment. So I started to consider to continue studying and do a PhD afterwards. At the same time, I also increasingly gained interest in the system theory and control side of things. So for my final year project, I had the opportunity to go on an exchange to ETH Zurich and to work on control of drones, which I found super interesting. Then while I was there, the perfect PhD opportunity for me came up here in London. So here I am back at Imperial studying towards my PhD. My research focuses on the role of information in control design, and in particularly on how to design controllers based on incomplete information. This is a fundamental problem in many aerospace applications, but the, really, the beauty about control is that it's extremely versatile and has applications everywhere. So being able to contribute to new knowledge in this field is super exciting. We are confident that each and every one of you has a bright future ahead and we wish you all the very best. Thank you.